Hey y'all, I'm KP, K Pinnell. I got next. You next up and you ain't been on sports like talk? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, you better hit him up. Look, you breaking next and you up next. Keep the quiz go hard. Rise and star on the big scene. Make them know who you are. You don't break a sweat. Don't settle for less. They put you through that test. Your resume that flex. Who got next? Who got next? SLT, ready to say go. Who got next? Who got next? Living my dreams and all your goals. Who got next? Who got next? You can ask B. Jones or head coach. Who got next? Who got next? You next up, so here's my vote. Ch- T Nation, welcome back to another fire episode of Sports Life Talks. You got next a platform that gives exposure to the voices of tomorrow. That's right, we're searching far and wide for amazing people, and we're finding rising stars in our communities who are doing big things and accomplishing big dreams. And today, ooh, we we got a trendsetter, we got a trailblazer, we got an icon in the building that's right when y'all see the mcdonald's all america game he's part of that committee when you see the espn hoops girls he's part of that committee he is part of any and everything that goes down in the women's basketball games on the amateur side and y'all are looking at a a the, the man and when he walked through making a show some love ladies and gentlemen welcome to the show k p kenneth Pennell. <laughs> You doing KP? I'm good, man. I'm vacationing a little bit, so you know, trying to recharge for for the next couple of days. Everybody can't be in Martha's Vineyard, KP. <laughs> Everybody, you know what I'm saying? Just I, I can see the background look beautiful on you. Hey, well, check this out. We about to get to your story, and we about to get these folks a banger. But before we do, allow me to reintroduce myself. I am your host, the mouth of the South, B. Jones, the OG, all things Louisiana. We'll put your L's up. Mr. Yeet is in the building, and I'm rocking alongside my brother from another mother, the other side of the logo, the choir storm. Shh. The head coach, KT. How you feeling, KT? I'm feeling great, B. Jones. We got a great guest, but I feel like we underdressed. I feel like this should be like a suit and tie episode or something, man. I don't know what's up. We in the boardroom today. We in the room where it happens. But you KT, you going to hear me say KT. I'm a, I got to make sure I put that T on it because when I say K, P, I got to make sure I put that P on it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I don't mess y'all up, man. But what's up, KT? You ready to go to work, man? I'm always ready to go to work, B. Jones. Let's go. Let's turn up. All right. But the only problem I got with this episode, KT, every time I look down at KP, I, I see that McDonald's logo. Don't get no I know. We're trying to get through this. We'll talk about McDonald's in a little bit. But we we got we to gotta push through, B. Jones. Let's go. Hey, check this out. Before we get to KP's amazing story, we got to pay the bill. So check this out. If this is your first time watching the show, we want to first and foremost say thank you. You know you could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to rock with your boys. But check this out. We need to ask a small favor of you, and it won't cost you a penny. That's right. We need to help continue this awesome momentum of 2023 the takeover is here we got to grow the show we got to grow the platform so we can continue having these giants these juggernauts come sit down below and tell you their amazing story so on the count of three here we go three things we need you to do we need you to smash that like button we need you to click on the subscribe button join the family then last but not least just go crazy and start sharing this episode to as many people as you can think of off the top of your head all right here we go on the count of kp is your people gonna rock with us i, I know i got them from from virginia all the way to new york to the west coast uh, to the South. We, we 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 represent you sound like a no limit soldier when you said that right no now all right. <laughs> here we go on the count of three let's do it like we true to it one two three Ooh, welcome to the sports life talk family that's right kt and now we don't take that family word lightly 
Hey, we don't do fans. We don't do followers. We do family. So welcome to the Sports Life Talk family. Hey, leave us a fire emoji in the chat. Let us know that you just joined the subscribe so we can reach out to you and thank you personally and introduce you to the family. But with that being said, man, it, hey, it's been, it's been a long time coming, KT. But I know that change going to come. We got us a special one in the building, ladies and gentlemen. KP, are you ready for the Sports Life Talk initiation? Let's Let's go. B. Jones on the intro like that, man. The only thing we were missing was our cash app on the screen, man. We got to start <laughs> making some money. Goodness. All right, KP, to initiate you into the SLT family, you got to give us your top five music artists. Well, I, I'm super diverse with my music. Uh, my, my greatest two groups of all time is uh, Maze fe featuring Frankie Beverly uh, and then the Isley Brothers. Uh, I'm a big uh, Notorious B.I.G. fan. I'm a big Jay-Z fan. And last but not least, I'm gonna have to say Sharday. Ooh! Hey, KT is that? Hey, KT over there salivating at your list, KP. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. All right, KP, we like to rank everybody's top five, and the highest you get is five. Okay. But there's no way with a top five like that, I can give you anything less than five. Yeah, <laughs> I can't give you anything less than ten. Yeah, that's that's a pretty good list. Man. B Jones, I hope your fingers man? ready, man. Give him twenty. We gotta give him twenty for that one. Here we go. Now that May song is stuck in my head. The one time after the morning after. Oh yeah, after the night before. Sing it for us, KP. Now, now y'all don't want me to do all that. Y'all gonna be in trouble. Your, your ratings is gonna go down if I start doing uh, that. B, that's like that's probably the coldest May song to me, man. Goodness, I right. gotta hear it, man. I don't know that one. You, you, you should be ashamed of yourself, B. Yeah, you should you, be ashamed, you. really. You should. All you right, so. to take some of your your cash app out. Uh, <laughs> yes, you ain't lying. You don't know that song. I know that B-I-G, P-O, P-P-A. No way. Yeah, we, we, we know that. We're talking about Maze. We need to get back on the Maze. All right, KP. Who is your favorite superhero and why? Uh, the Flash. Uh, the Flash has always been, you know, sometimes we're in a hurry, but we're in a hurry with a purpose. And that's why I like, you know, he can get to places really fast, communicate, and get to somewhere else very fast. So it's about... Uh, doing things with a purpose, so he would be uh, my superhero of choice. And that explanation fit you perfectly. I don't think I could have said that any better. So that was a good. One. All right, Barry Allen. Since every good superhero needs their own theme music, what would your theme song be? So I don't know if you've ever heard this song. It's called "Allure" by Jay Z. It kind of tells of his life of being in the streets. Uh, obviously, I'm, I'm not a street guy. I'm not a thug, but you know, just the way his song represents a little bit of his life i would my song would represent my life and and the the, the struggles that i've been through because you know i wasn't always kp i was a little knucklehead too but you know that song is, is something that I, I i personally just i try to listen to it at least you know once a day really it, it, that's on the black album isn't it i don't know yeah, why i, I feel like that was on the black album yeah, yeah. I, I know the yeah. song i just don't know about heart but i remember that song being on the album yeah, it just talks about, you know, when he was in the streets, when he was riding with his guys, when his guys went to jail, all of that. So it, it kind of reminds me of, you know, how I grew up. You know, I had a bunch of guys go to jail. I had a bunch of guys, you know, go a different direction. And truthfully, I almost went that direction, too. But I had two very good parents that didn't mind sticking their foot in my ass. <laughs> oh, God, man, we need more of those today. Goodness, we need more of those today. So, 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 so your mama and daddy know my mama. Because <laughs> I, I was fed that same protein diet. <laughs> I know what the belt is. I know what the switch is. I know what a spoon is. Whatever it took. I know where a it is. Shoe or remote control. But that, yeah, whatever, we're whatever, not going to go too in depth with that one. Yeah. All right. So if you could shadow anyone for a week and learn from them, they could be either dead or alive. Who would it be and why? Uh, Michael Jordan. Uh, I, I've been a Michael Jordan is my second favorite player of all time. Uh, but his business acumen and what he developed from his shoe brand is just mind blowing. And it's it's for me being an African American to see another African American uh, do the things that he's done. 
hey, I, I want to learn. I want to be, you know, in a room. I want to be, and, and I always say, if I'm not learning or in a room where I'm, I'm not learning, I'm in the wrong room. Right, so, right. That's big for me, uh, someone of, of his stature. All right, so B and I, we're going to produce a movie centered around you. The one thing that we're missing is a lead actor. Okay. So who should we get to play you in the story of your life? Denzel Washington, because, you know, <laughs> you know <laughs> line brothers need to represent each other. I, I, I can see you. Denzel killing that role, I'm too. I do yeah. see Denzel, but due to the budgetary restraints, I'm going to have to go with the boy that Jonathan Majors, man. He he, come, he on the bounce back right now. <laughs> yeah, he's on the yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't know. He got that Marvel money, too, B. Jones, so it may be kind of hard to get him. We may have to go, like, you know what? Nah, I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna do that. We go Denzel. We gonna. We yeah. gotta think big, B. Jones. We go. We might have to go get Wesley out out, out of that tax level. <laughs> I, know, I know Wesley probably do it about fifty dollars a way. Yeah, looking at right now, do it a little bit cheaper. Yeah. All right. So, what is something that basketball has taught you that you can use when you're not on the court? That that is bigger than basketball. Basketball is a tool to help you get to the next level. Um, that's what I you know tell all these kids too. Don't don't let basketball use you. You use basketball. So you know. I tell people every day I'm a professional at basketball and I don't dribble once. So, you know, you got to mm. take, take the things that, that you love. And I don't work a day in my life because I do basketball for a living. So when I go speak to people, I, that's one thing that I'm, I'm very stern on that this basketball has changed my life for the good, because again, I wasn't always uh, KP and, and, and listen, I worked on wall street for, for almost 20 years. Uh, but basketball changed my life. So I take that with me everywhere I go. Like, you know, I'm always wearing something that has something to do with basketball or I'm always talking about it or I'm, I'm always on the phone about basketball. And it's not necessarily about playing. It's about, you know, the business of basketball, the relationships in basketball and how you can thrive without ever playing again because my playing days are long gone. B. Jones, he is with a Jay Z line though, man. Tell me, I'm playing basketball. I ain't got to pick up a ball. Oh my goodness! <laughs> All right, so the last one I'm going to ask you in the initiation, man. Everybody see they see the McDonald's logo down there. It's down there for a reason. I got, but I got the dragon on too. So yeah, you got, yeah. So B. Jones and I, man, everywhere we go, we got to stop at the McDonald's. We got to get the you got next pack. So McDonald's, if you're listening, just know we get the double quarter pounder. We get it with uh, lettuce, tomato, cheese, all that good stuff. We get a large fry, and we get a 10-piece nugget. So I just told everybody, our meal, KP, what's your go-to meal? Double fish filet, 10-piece nugget, a large fry, and a big orange drink. Oh, man. Oh, I might try the KP meal next yeah, time. And this time we go. It may be happening after this show, B. Jones, while you're playing. <laughs> all right, Toast. So to everybody that's watching... Uh, hit that subscribe button, or if you think about doing so, please do. Leave us your top five music artists, your theme song, and your favorite superhero in the comments. And finally, go to our website, sltugotnext.com, to learn more, learn more about us and the rest of our family members from our You Got Next family. So, B. Jones, go ahead and take it away, brother, and tell everybody the story of Mr. KP. KP, they, they learned a little bit about who you are, but now it's time for us to really tell them your story. Welcome to the family, man. This, I just want to tell you again, you're probably going to get all kind of thank yous before, even before after this show, man. We we so appreciative that, uh, that you stopped down in the middle of your vacation and, and just came to tell us your story because this is one that I, I just personally feel a little spirit of conviction on. You know what I'm saying? I, I like the world needs to hear this. It's, it's so much stuff that happens off the court that goes behind. There's so many moving pieces and people have have no idea how these AAU tournaments are put together and how these rankings are put together how these just it's, it's just so amazing and uh it's so it's so many personalities and stories that we can all find our place in this in this big journey and you are just a, a living evidence of that and you super motivational and inspirational to me because your story uh kind of reminds us of ourselves but let's get to it man let's let's talk about it you from hurts uh, hurt virginia you got you got to tell us about coming up in Virginia and when did you fall in love with the game of basketball? I mean, again, Hurt Virginia, most people have never heard of. Never it's, heard of. It's it's the South, and you know, and people say, "Oh, Virginia is in the South." You go to my hometown and say that, and and, and watch what happens. Um, very rural. I mean, everybody knows everybody, and you know, uh, as far as basketball goes, we played on dirt courts growing up. 
I mean, and when I say dirt court, my mama wouldn't let me in the house until you took all those clothes off after playing basketball. So uh, basketball has always been a staple. My father was not a basketball player. My mother was not a basketball player. But one day he turned on the TV and I saw Magic Johnson. And uh, Magic's always been my favorite player. Uh, and I fell in love with a guy that tall doing the things that he could do with the no-look passes and, you know, leading the team. And I wanted to be that, you know. Uh, obviously, I didn't get to his height, but, you know, being 6'4 and being able to play a little bit, you know, it was it's inspirational. And, and like I said earlier, I used that basketball to get me to college and, to provide some things that, you know, I never thought I would. I'm the first person in, you know, my immediate family to ever go to college. And, you know, I don't think, but maybe one other person in my family went to college, you know, wow. at, at this level. And, you know, being where I'm from now, I go home and it's like I'm a celebrity, uh, which that's still kind of hard for me to, to, to fathom. But, you know, people want to touch me. People want their kids to be like I am now because of, you know, I grew up around the drug dealers and I drew, grew up around the thugs. And but I also grew up in, in my neighborhood. There were probably there 15 ministers. Um, and I tell this story a lot. My grandmother always told me, you're going to be a minister. I said, Grandma, I love you, but that ain't going to happen. Um, but this women's basketball world, this this grassroots world, that's my ministry. This is my calling. So when I when I found this. I knew this is where I was supposed to be. And, you know, by doing this, I don't work a day in my life. You know, my, my job is to change lives. And, you know, uh, that's not an easy task. And it's not always accepted the way, you know, I would like for it to be accepted. But I know people respect me. You might not always like me. And, and that's okay, too. But you respect my grind and you respect what I do. Well, I tell you what, everything you're saying is unequivocally the truth. Uh, I, I noticed that uh, that people just gravitated to you at these tournaments, man. I mean, it's like everybody loves some KP. Yeah, you right. You probably you probably the shrunk inch. I ain't see the six folk. <laughs> I ain't see the six. I, I saw more of that six t that six three. You know what I'm saying? So you <laughs> not just messing with your KP. I, I was buttoned up a little bit, you know, trying to be a little yeah, fly. Yeah. Though, so, you but, but you know what though, you felt very accessible. So you said they, they treat you like a celebrity. You felt very accessible. You felt like you know. Anybody that stop and talk to me, I got gems. I got something I want to tell you. Or, you know, even if it was just a hug and a and a how you been doing, uh, you felt very accessible. But but I, you know, the, the question that people are probably wondering is, you got all these accolades. You come from 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 humble means, from from humble beginnings. How, how does one go about getting? And you just you said twenty years in a whole other industry. So how does one go about rebranding themselves, re retooling, re you know, finding new skill sets and creating a whole new lane and in this women's basketball game and, and then on top of that two-parter why did you choose women's basketball i'm curious because you chose women's basketball when eh, let's just be real let's just be real it wasn't too many it wasn't no espn back then jack right so this is uh, uh you probably gonna need to hold your breath for this <gasps> i started in this sport in women's basketball as somebody's dj <laughs> <laughs> Making music for him? No. I was the guy in in the gym playing the music at halftime or playing music during the timeouts or, you know, playing music between games. So at a local tournament, I was his DJ. Now, now when I tell you who he is, you're, you're going to really uh, laugh. He, he's actually the head scout for the Cleveland Cavaliers now. But he was in the music industry for uh, forever. His sister is the rapper Foxy Brown. Uh, he used to work for Track Masters back in the day. And, you know, he was a basketball guy and we kind of met in the gym, just kind of talking junk, playing against each other. And, you know, he said, hey, come by and see what I'm doing. And uh, the, the it was called Rose Classic, still called Rose Classic, still, you know, to this day. And he's like, hey, I, I need somebody to see it from a different kind of mindset. And like you said, I was like, girls basketball? Nah, I'm not doing that. That's, that's girls basketball. However, I, I went to Old Dominion University where when I went to Old Dominion, we were used to good girls basketball. Yes. Went and sat in the gym and kind of saw the level of play. I was like, oh, this is different. And I saw his vision. And he said, well, if you don't want to do it, at least just come and play some music for me and you know, the, the funny thing is, as people would walk through the door, I would know them. I would know their 
dad or mother or somebody in their family that that played just because of you know obviously my playing days and things like that and little did i know you know and his name's anton marchand you know shout out to anton um he was kind of setting me up to kind of take over the 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 business uh and, and maybe not the business but to to take over running running certain parts of the business because his dream was for him to go one way to the the nba and me to go one way towards you know women's basketball so you know kind of taking over the business and developing relationships and at the time I, I needed to get out of the corporate world because i gonna be honest i was probably 100 pounds heavier uh you know although i was making a a shitload of money that's not always good for you you know right you got to go where your where your heart takes you and your soul takes you so i took a chance and you know here i am years later with you know probably some of the, the highest accolades in the business that that can be given i guess um and you know he's very successful with the cleveland cavaliers so we look back and we we laugh at it and said these were dreams that we that we had and they came to fruition but with that a lot of hard work you know, uh, a lot of things where we weren't getting paid a lot of money. You know, I was doing things kind of on my own dime and, you know, just grinding and going out and meeting people. But what, what really changed things? And, and, and I know I'm talking a lot. Um, this was, this is a talk show. So you talk, talk, <laughs> talk as much as you want. That, you get permission to talk unlimited. I, uh, we went to, I used to go to the men's final four every year. And, you know, a friend of ours said, hey, man, you need to come to the women's final four just to see it. And we went and it, it changed my outlook. And it just so happens we went to someone was throwing a party. And when I got to the party, the line was around the corner. Now, I live in New York City and I'm with some New York guys. I'm with some Florida guys. We all looked at each other and said, we're not standing in that line. No way. So one of the guys and it was a free party. One of the guys went to the bouncer and said, listen, man, I got two hundred dollars. That bouncer said, you got $200, you can let anybody in you want right now. So going into the party, you know, being, again, living in New York, bottle service is six, $700. Sheesh! They said, and we were in Tennessee, Nashville, and they said the bottle service was $50. We said, bring us 10 of them. <laughs> and, and it wasn't necessarily to drink. It was just the camaraderie that we already knew some people and, hey, just come hang out with us. And and I saw a vision there and, and the, I met the lady who was throwing a party and she said, I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, and I said, oh, really? And from that day in Nashville, I've thrown the party at the Women's Final Four for the last 10 years. Uh, wow. Probably, everybody knows me from, from that, obviously, because everybody comes to it. Like we started with first year, maybe 200 people this past year. Um, it was 3,000 people who showed up. Good grief. Wow. Um, you know, we have a name for it, but everybody call it, calls it KP's party. So that's... Well, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I got I to gotta admit something, KP, about your party. Me and Kevin, we, we babies in this game. You know what I'm saying? We just, we just this is our first summer of, uh, of the takeover tour and hitting all these different cities. And you know, we heard about KP Final Four party. And me and Kevin looked at each other and said, man, we didn't even get the invite. We didn't even get the invite. They tell us we like, yeah, I don't. And so, so me and Kevin, we driving home from Louisville. We like, man, what we got to do to get in the KB party uh, next year? You know what I mean? You good, man. You good in Cleveland. You good. You you VIP. How about that? Oh wait. You good. You good. But now we we, we it, it brings the culture together. You know our people, uh, and it's just a basketball community. It, it's just very rare you can go to a, a an event where you have all nationalities, you know, yeah, all orientations, and everybody gets along. And and you know a lot of people get jobs, get get jobs out of that party, or you know make some type of connections out of that party. So, you know, hey, we in there, my baby, for the last ten years, and it's really grown, and it's it's helped my profile, obviously, uh, but. It's just the respect factor that people know I'm doing it. It's a free party. I don't. And you said $50 bottle service. So be a KT. No, 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 not there. 
Not there, man, man. Listen. Now, now obviously, I do. I, I just I sure with you. People get some, some free drinks. I make sure some things happen. I'll just mess with you, KP. You know? I, I know. That was 10 years ago, man. Yeah, they, they was, you coming <laughs> you come in that $50 bottle, sir. They're going to be like, man, you better head to the bathroom. Yeah, hey. Man, <laughs> $50 a drink, maybe. But, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's been a real staple in our game. It's probably the best event at the Women's Final Four now, besides the games, are, obviously. Yeah, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Everybody's trying to get there. And, and the fun part is you know picking up the bands i get to see the people and people you know i don't know come and introduce themselves and you know thank me for doing such such uh, a great event and you know it's worked out really well so that that party has really elevated me uh with with the the community more than anything well, let's talk about you in the community, man, because you are you everywhere. We pull up in Chicago, there go KP. We pull up in Louisville, there go KP. You reminded me of that uh that that uh that Snoop Dogg. Every other city we go, <laughs> there, there go KP. <laughs> hey, no, nah, for real though, you the hardest working man in the business, man. Like, what what is it like to be in a room with 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 you know executives and and making these decisions with the McDonald's All American Committee and and the ESPN Hoop Girls? Because these are official lists, like. When we go Google, I mean, these, these, this is the list. This is the it. This is, this is what all of these young ladies, 3.5 million high school athletes across the country are working hard to get, you know, to get this type of publicity and notoriety. What is it like being in those rooms? It, it's, it's a dream come true. Uh, another story. I, um, back in the early eighties, uh, to the, to the early nineties, Ebony magazine used to put the McDonald's all American teams in their magazine in the april yep. edition so from i think maybe 78 to maybe 92 i collected those uh i, I tore them out of my parents <laughs> ebony magazines and i collected those um because in my heart i wanted to be a mcdonald's all-american but yeah, I was, yeah. wasn't i wasn't that talented um and so when i i got the call to be part of the mcdonald's all-american my mother went in my room and found that collection wow yeah and sent it to me and you know that was life changing for me that was a that was my dream actually coming true that means i followed through i kept following through i didn't make the the game but now i make the game every year um so you know being able to be in those rooms and helping to make some of those decisions it's a dream come true man like uh, i'd never if you would told me this even 10 years ago or, or or even you know five to six years ago i'd been like you crazy man i i don't have a chance for that but hard work you know, like you, said, you see me in the gym and it's not a gym that I'm not in. That's one, not one. That about me is because I do do the work. Uh, I, I, I don't mind being in the gym. It's the gym. I'm getting paid to watch kids play basketball. We could we could do a TED talk on just how you organize your schedule and your travel itinerary, man. We can start like a a travel blog with just you uh, with that alone, man. But I, I gotta ask you. So last question, and then we are gonna get you up out of here because I, I know we we promised you only 30, 35, 45 minutes. But good, brother. Here, here we go. There's the the worst, the most hated, and the most loved person in every single gym across America is the referee. That's number one. The second most loved and hated person in the gym is the person, the scouts. It's the pe the people that are sitting on the sidelines critiquing these young ladies and and they and they and they have to give them a ranking. They have to assign them a ranking. And unfortunately, it's a young lady who's probably going to be 96 who feels like she's 45. It's it's going to be some people out there that's going to be like there's no way he placed her at number 10 and you know when my daughter can do this 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 and that, right? And and it's just unfortunate. And then there's other that's a whole another population of people that just says, "Why are you critiquing 15 year olds?" Why why are you why are you why are you telling 16 year olds they they lack this this skill set or they need to improve in this one because now all of a sudden you quote unquote hating right you you the man that everybody loved to hate essentially but what is your advice to the young ladies to, to as they see you on this sideline and they see where they come up in the rankings and they might not get a favorable rank and it might not be where they thought they should be but on a, on a positive note what is your advice to those those families and those young ladies about those rankings and, and how to take that information and move forward from it uh i didn't let a ranking determine my life uh i kept working and that's the same thing i tell these parents who are the craziest and 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 the AU coaches who are the craziest and and the difference is I'm so accessible to people because before I did all that stuff everybody knew me so they always right. had my number so I, I tell you when the rankings come out I just cut my phone off I, I, <laughs> I, 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 
but but I am not afraid to talk to anybody about it because you know like you said you have seen me in the gym it's not like I'm looking at a computer screen and not you know actually evaluating people and I'm not always right <laughs> I'm not I'm not afraid to say that and but you always have to be ready for the truth too because some people they want a yes man I'm going to give you the truth good bad or indifferent and you know if I think you need to work on certain certain things I'm gonna tell you these are the things you need to work on to get in the rankings to be ranked higher to you know put, potentially be a McDonald's All-American you know I'm I'm on so many committees <laughs> um, which to my favor you know people want to be around me and people send me their schedules and if you send me a schedule myself or one of my eyes will come see you I, I, I respect the, the sanctity of it, but be ready for the truth. Uh, and I, I tell people that. And so whether you like me, don't like me, uh, I am respected. And I think that's a little bit different than, you know, some of the other guys that do this in the business, you know, they want to tell you, yeah, you great. You great. Nah, I'm going to tell you the truth. And you know, <laughs> even with my own son, he thinks he's the greatest. I tell him, no, you stink. You know what's crazy about this all, though, KP? Let's just be real. If somebody assign you the number, let's say they say you 888, right? A lot of people would be discouraged about that. But if you really take a step back and look at the big picture, do you know how many young ladies across America are playing basketball? Yeah. And for you to be in the top 1,000, like that number alone is crazy. Like you probably still part of the top 5%. Top five to th three to five percent of young ladies in the country at that ranking. It, isn't that that's just that's just crazy, man. I mean, and so when you see somebody rank number one, two, or three, like I don't know, y'all y'all get what I'm trying to say. Let me, like, let me, let me you know, give you an even better. Let me give you an even better one. Those same kids and those same parents and those same AAU coaches. Who do you think they call when they need some help? Hmm. When they need somebody to call a college coach for them because the college coach is respecting. Who do you think they call? So I have to remind them of that too. You it know, ain't no some of these kids I don't have to help, but a lot of these kids I've helped. And, right. And I'm. I always tell a kid and a parent, if I help you, if I, I don't even want you to mention my name because I'm not doing it for the fame. I'm not doing it for the money. Just I, you know, I did it. I know I did it. Let's move on. And let's I, get it. I'm telling you, I just sent a kid literally to Eastern Michigan less than three weeks ago, and she was a 23. All right, coach. Here we go. Now we're about to have some fun. We talked serious before. We talked tough for a while, but now it is time for the infamous sports life talk. You got next championship rounds. Now, coach, hey, now, coach, this is a part of the show with KT and I. We're going to put on the gloves. All right. And now you are officially calling all the shots. So have you ever played a game called Would You Rather? No, I haven't, but I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's super simple. So both KT and I are going to make a pitch to you, KP. Whichever one of those you select, that host will get a point. The first host to get two points or the best out of three will win this episode's game of championship rounds. All right? All right. So I am the defending champ, the two-time defending champ. Here we go. Round number one. KP, would you rather want run a championship AAU organization or have, it, have part ownership in a WNBA team? Part, part ownership. <laughs> yeah, you better not gave him a negative sound. Yeah. <sighs> he he told you he's from the hood, B. Jones. He could fight, so I'm oh, glad I you didn't hit that. Yeah. <laughs> He, you know, I don't know much about hurt Virginia, so you know, but coach, that, that, I mean, KP, that wasn't that wasn't the direction we needed to start this thing off. <laughs> Come on, KT, Come on, KT let's go round, right, round two. two. Would you rather host your own food show on ESPNU, where you interview athletes and celebrities, you know, like Denzel to talk about the movie, as they take you to their favorite places to eat in their hometowns, or or would you rather have a Netflix documentary follow you around for two to three years? We're gonna call it the Scout. And uh, they're going to tell your story in kind of a last chance you style documentary of all the travel, all the tournaments, and how you interact with people in, in all of these different boardrooms and meetings. Uh, the food show. Ah. I, don't, I don't want to. It's not about me. I, I don't ever want to make it about me. I'm, I'm, I bleed the same blood you guys bleed. So uh, it's never about me. It's about, you know, enhancing the culture. Coach, KP, we got 
we, we got to grow the game. <laughs> Not just that's what you can. Well, <laughs> get you. God, right. dog, KP. All right, you know what? Let's go. Let's go round three. Right, so on, for guys. round three, this is normally the tiebreaker, but I've already won the first two. So we're just going to do it anyway, KP. On our show, which you can watch Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Central, B. Jones has a segment called The Drop, where he presents a pair of shoes that he feels are worthy of your financial donations. So for this round, we're going to present a shoe that we feel KP would like. So what we're going to do, well, I'm going to count down from three, and I need for you to say, hold that sneaker. And whichever shoe you pick, this host wins this. And I'm a sneaker head. I'm bad. Oh, well, I got to try to find, well, I bought everyone round one and two, so I can, I can be risque. So I'm going to count down KP, and I just need for you to say, hold that sneaker. Okay. Okay. Three, two, one. Hold that sneaker. If you're a true sneakerhead and you understand what we got here, you already know what's on the screen. So I, I got to give it to the Cements because the, the, the thing is, I just had on those the other ones yesterday. The well, black. You should have went with me today. You got to keep nah, that. Nah, nah. Ah. Cements, man. Them Cements is, you can kind of, you can pull them off with a little bit of air. So. Well, cue my music, B. Jones. Uh, B. Jones, you said you, what, two times? So now I can use these two words. And new champion. Thank you so much, KP, man. KP, KT, we the dynamic duo, B. Jones. I don't even need you anymore. I I, this thing, this thing went went sour fast. It went sour fast. I don't. I, it went it went further south than Hurst, Virginia. All right, man. So, <laughs> God, KP. I thought we. I thought I thought I was going. I don't know. I'm hurt right now. I'm hurt right now. All right, here we I go. Great. The title of the show, Sports Life Talks. You got next, KP, and everybody who knows you, they rocking with you. They following you at you know at K Pinnell seventy one. And uh, what do you? What is your vision, boy? What What do you see the future for for yourself and uh, and for the game? Uh, just keep growing the game. You know, keep being a springboard for you know, especially our people. You know. Sadly, it's just not a lot of us in the room, you know, and I think it's my responsibility to kind of help us get in the room uh, a little bit more. Uh, and that's, you know, through through USA Basketball and, and some of these out other outlets. Um, so my, my vision is always to, to help the next generation, whether, you know, my job is to help them even when they finish playing. You know, I try to help them get jobs. I try to help them get coaching positions. So, you know, to continue to do those type of things. And, you know, I have some other things I want to do. I want to create. Uh, some type of agency, some type of uh, plan with, you know, coaches and representation, not necessarily me representing them, but, you know, I want to have a, a bigger voice in the room, man. That, that's, that's the biggest thing for me. All right. So do you have any shout outs you want to give? Uh, obviously, let's, we're going to always shout out Hurt Virginia. That's, and, you know, I'm a DC boy from heart. So we always shout out go-go music. I don't know if y'all listen to go-go music, but we just got turned on. Yeah. You know uh, Kenneth Robinson? Uh that name sounds familiar. So I'm Is sure McDonough, McDonough Rams. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know all I know all those guys. Uh shout out to, you know, Brooklyn. We always gotta show you know, Brooklyn. And you know, more or less shout out to you guys for, you know, starting something that's, you know, not the norm. You know, I, I always want to support the people that, you know, are on their own trying to do it their way. And because that's the way I look at it. I'm going to do it my way. Uh, so shout out to you guys and just shout out to the community, the basketball, the women's basketball community, because it's continuing to grow and continue to be, you know, something special. You know, it's, it's growing fast. And, and I'm glad to be, you know, kind of at the forefront, forefront of some of that. All right. So this is a part of the show where you get a chance to call the person that you think should have next. Tell me, I got a chance to rock with uh, B. Jones and KT. I told them my story. Why don't you do the same thing? With that said, KP, who are you calling out? Who should have next? Tanisha Benson. Tanisha Benson uh, runs Sports City Angels. She's also uh, on the McDonald's All-American Committee. She's also involved with um, USA Basketball. Uh, and she's a she's an Ohio girl who, who really 
has done great things in the sport. Someone y'all really should sit down and talk to. All right, Tanisha Benson, your ticket just got punched. You are up next. We're going to be reaching out to you, sliding in your DMs so we can get you on the show and you can tell us about your incredible journey. Kevin, I don't know. He teed up pretty good. I'm pretty excited about, about Ms. Benson to come on the show, but Kenneth Pennell, KP, you got next man you a trailblazer you are icon you are transcendent you are extraordinary and elite you deserve a yeet okay man, man. We, we, we man we appreciate you brother hey sports life talk nation man we are here this is real this is happening we need y'all come on let's get this thing cranking let's get the numbers rocking on this thing don't forget follow us on all our social media platforms the following what's important for us the what's important for us is that we keep getting the voice that's get bigger and bigger so we can keep telling these amazing stories so please tap in with us all one word at sports life talk and if you're sitting there you're like man i gotta get on this show i know it's a lot of young ladies that's hoping right now that's going to these tournaments you know city to city that's traveling trying to earn those spots you're like i want to be on the show i want to tell my story go to our website slt you got next.com click on the nominate tab and tell us about yourself tell us why and we will reach out and we will give you an audition to come on the show and i don't know if we mentioned it earlier we do go live every wednesday night at eight o'clock p.m central standard time we would love to have you guys come be a part of that it's a two-way show this is a one way you right now you're just listening you, you, you you're doing your homework or you you know you're at work or you're cooking or cleaning or something you got this show on in the background but check this out. Come hang out with us Wednesday night. You can actually roast KT on some of his horrible takes. And uh, if you smash that subscribe button, all you got to do is, you know, YouTube will notify you when we go live. Kevin, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm kind of ha happy, but at the same time, a little disappointed I lost my belt because I know what's missing me. I'm coming to get you, baby. I'm going to come get you. Y'all watch the next episode. I'll get her back. I'll get her back. But KT, close you're talking about this out. Bell here? You're talking about this belt? I'm talking about that one. Just make sure oh, you only want to make sure. I just want to make sure you were talking about this belt. KP, man, thank you so much for rocking with us. Whatever we can do to help you out, please let us know we got your back. Absolutely. I appreciate that. Listen, to the rest of y'all, Sports Life Talk Nation, we love y'all. Stay safe. Be blessed. Respect each other and love one another because together we are better. And keep dreaming big because you never know. Your story may be the next one featured on Sports Life Talks. You got next. Yeet. It was crazy as I knew you had next because you always working, you always grinding, you're in your bag because you're always working. Like in due time, I just I knew you got next. Oh, you did it, huh? Crack the code. You got next, you smashing goals. You want next, you need exposure. Well, sports like talk, got the baddest show, like the baddest hut in the room. Podcast is tuning to just for you to talk your shit. Talk your mushroom, you want what you eat and you should consume. Sports like talk from the late night to the afternoon, then rest repeat. Hit the like, leave a comment, or subscribe so you don't miss a beat. You got next, it's a small taste of a winning meal from a chef type of celebrity. What's up next is you, at least you better be. Yeah, you got next, yeah. I can feel it, oh, winner just like me. Talking this, yeah, 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 yeah. Sports life talking this.